Yeah, so hello, folks. Again, I'd like to wish a very happy Halloween to everyone. Oh, where's that list? Oh, there's that list. That's good. Yes, I hope everyone enjoyed their Halloween. I know this guy did, because I am the Techno Blue Ranger, here from the Daytona Beach Bump Fight lead. Um, Dr. Tom had to be at work. Hey, you have to pay the bill somehow. First of all, I have to get some shout-outs out. I don't know why he does this all the time. He puts, he knows I have a blue visor, and he writes on blue paper and blue ink. What's up with that? But here we go, here are some shout-outs. Let's see here. How does he work this thing? I'm used to techno stuff. This is like hyper simple. Oh, whoa, don't want that big. Let's see here. Let me figure out this archaic device he uses. For I use technology. Hey, here we go. Some shout outs that were kind of forgotten about over the whole week. Tralala 2. You, sir, get that six count. Kaiju, you sir are a master of the air guitar.
Joey Novak. Thank you very much for your comments on Facebook. You, sir, can roll out of here. And the last but not least, Sonny Bimbo, you're partying like Brock Lesnar. Therefore, you have your briefcase, briefcase boombox. And now it's time to start the show proper, so hit my music. And it's time to talk now about Crown Jewel, which I'm surprised, actually. This was actually a really, most part, fairly good wrestling show. Uh, let's see here. Well, I can actually see stuff out of it. Pretty cool. I did miss the one part because they did not mention the fact that they were going to have a preacher, so I missed the 20-man battle royal, so I got that wrong because I had Andrade winning. But instead, Umberto Carrero won, and he gets to face AJ Styles. Again, it's going to be fun as long as they don't keep on doing these repeat matches. Um, kind of your standard Battle Royal format. Um, it felt a little bit weird because they didn't really tease or build anything, which is very hard to, to know. Um, some of the notable things is that Apollo Crews tossed out Titus O'Neil in just kind of matter of fact fashion. <laughs> and then, as part of the final three, it was Eric Rowan, Luke Harper, Umberto Carrero. They, for some reason, tossed out Umberto, but he did not hit the ground, so therefore he is not eliminated. So then, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan started to go at each other. And in the midst of all that chaos, Umberto gets both of them out. Umberto gets to face AJ Styles later in the evening. Then we had Brock Lesnar versus Cain Velasquez. And Cain Velasquez does not have on his mask. He is so much of a better wrestler when he's a masked wrestler. Um, seems even the Saudis know Paul Heyman's taglines. And by the way, folks, whoa. The Saudis have not only all the oil, but they also have all the pyro. So much pyro. Oh, so awesome. Yes, more pyro. More pyro for everyone. Again, party guy here loves his pyro. And that was just really cool. Py fireworks are still number, number one in this guy's book. Uh, for the most part, it was a kind of short fight. Um, I'll say it was maybe five minutes, probably a little bit less. It felt like a shoot fight, though, which was really cool. It was something actually really different to see. Oh, I need to vent this. I need, like, smoke to come out of this room, though. So it felt like a shoot fight, though. Uh, Kane, typically, so there's punching away. Brock just kind of covers up a lot until they get to the ground. Uh, Brock locks in the Kimura, which is a legitimate MMA hold. Cain Velasquez has to tap out, or, he, or he's going to get a shoulder ripped off. Very simply. Uh, Brock then punctuates that by F5-ing. Of course, poor Cain Velasquez. He got his win back. Rey Mysterio came in with a chair. Eh, eh, eh. Does not work that way with, with Brock Lesnar. It was kind of a little bit more of annoyance. Brock gets the chair. F5's Kane Velasquez again on, onto said chair. And this time, Ray realized he has to put all his weight behind that chair. He started to get on Brock a little bit. So that'll be interesting. I wonder what will happen if there's going to be... So your Survivor Series is coming up next. So that I'll have to take a look at when that is. Or at least Dr. Tomwell. Or... Hobo Tom will. I don't know, maybe Dr. Tom will give those predictions. 
but it'll be interesting to see if this is a lead up to WrestleMania, maybe. Because it'll be Survivor Series Royal Rumble, maybe for the Rumble. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens though. But I'll tell you what, that was. I'm okay with it. People said, "Oh, it was too short. It was this and that." Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was a fairly decent match. It's a cheeseburger match. Then we get the greatest tag team turmoil match ever to crown the greatest tag team champion in the world. Oh, that's right. Oh, he's open. Wait, are my vents already open? I forget. It's been so long since I've had to open up vents and stuff. Sir. I'll be okay. Yeah, I'll be okay for now. There we go. Um, if I have to vent in case it gets foggy, I'll just reopen up the vent. That's all good. Fact? Yeah. If all my vents are open. It's still so long since I've seen parts of this helmet. It's not even funny. But let's get back to some more wrestling, though. Enough about my technical issues. Then we had Robert Root. We had the tag team turmoil match. Fun stuff again. Uh, started off with Robert Root and Dolph Ziggler versus the Lucha House Party. This was pretty good. You can say, oh, you say fly, Lindsay, fly, and fly. Grand Metal League fly, because stuff they do, is, I might be able to somewhat copy it, but they do it so much better, though. But it's so quick, though. Um, definitely Rude and Ziggler need to slow down the pace, and they do, and whenever it's slower, again, very in very typical heel fashion, they always get the advantage once things slow down. So that's really good. Uh, he, he Rude hits the glorious DDT, and they pick up the win, and they get to face Hawkins and Ryder. Um, for the most part, this was a quick match. This was kind of like a little in between squash, where they actually give the other team a break to kind of catch their breath and relax. Hawkins and Ryder do get a little bit of offense. Um, Hawkins is sent to the outside. I think it's that zigzag spine buster combo that they hit on Ryder. I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll say Ryder. Whatever it was, it was a zigzag spine buster combo that they hit on Ryder. And they advance. Hawkins and Ryder have to go to the back. And then. Ding! 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 Heavy machinery come out. Yeah, it's time for the caterpillar action, baby, baby. Uh, for the most part, it's, for, it's a really fun match. Tucker, he does that fun splash from the second rope. Tucker gets beat up a lot, though, and this is very typical for WWE tag teams, where there's always going to be that one person that seems to take all the bumps. Why not let the other guy get get bumped on too? But there is the hobo cat walking around. She knows that this guy is here, so she wants to kind of steer it clear, because if not, she might get on YouTube again. For some reason, she doesn't like YouTube. Who knows why? But back to wrestling. So with this match, again, it was fun. Tucker gets beat up a lot. Very typical, though, this tag team format that they kind of do a lot. Eh, I'm afraid it's going to get old soon, or it's going to be very, again, just typically of this match, I got a fence again. Or very typically of this match, it just becomes predictable. So even with the big guys, that should never happen, especially the big guys. She needs to be more unpredictable. Uh, they do hit the compactor, though. Awesome. The compactor makes sense that it's a, it's a dual move. It's just, it's just a big splash on someone. It's any position, but the thing is, big guy number one crushes you. You have, like, zero time to recover. And then number two big guy crushes you. So it's like, 
I'm done. I had no air in me. Now I really have no. Now I really have no air in me. I'm done. So again, that was really fun to see. Otis is amazing. Hit the. I think he missed the caterpillar because I think Bobby Roode was smart enough to roll outside the ring for the final part. Audi crowd went absolutely bonkers though. Again, really fun. But then Heavy Machinery gets to take on New Day. The New Day rocks. This was neat because for a while it was just really a battle of big men. Big E is probably one of the most entertaining wrestlers of all time. Not necessarily the best wrestler, but I'll tell you what. He has such charisma and exudes such charisma. It's infectious. You just want to cheer for him. Say, Big E. New Day Rocks. New Day Rocks. And then for a moment, it turned out to be a battle of the big men, which, oh, so amazing, though. It's great. Uh, you were curious to see who was going to get the belly to belly. I think at the time it was Otis and Big E, who was going to belly to belly and or suplex the other. It was fun. Um, they hit the Midnight something. It's not the up, up, down, down. It's the other one, the Midnight Special thing. And New, the new Day! Go forward. They take on the B team. Ah, B team. That's, that's just, again, the kind of pause match for the real matches to happen. I can actually open pages with these gloves on. I have a newfound skill. So that was, so again, kind of a squash match with the B team getting involved. Then it was the New Day versus the Revival. Oh, oh Revival are so good. This was a true tag team match in every sense of the way. Classical wrestling match. Um, not so much as high-flying as when Lucha House Party was in. But these are two teams that really like to go at it. Revival, they're such mad technicians. Oh, it's so good. There we go. I mean, it's just... Oh, I don't know. I don't know why the Revival's not pushed even more than they normally are. So, it's always hard to say. I don't know. When they came out of NXT, they, they were really good. And they went really south. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Again, both teams, both the New Day and Revival, do so much good double-team moves. The difference is really the power with the New Day. They actually come out on top, but for all of their issues, even though, they, even though the Revival did hit the Shatter Machine, the New Day still kind of walk away with the win, which is always good to see. Again, I would like to see the Shadow Machine be a proper finisher and just end the match. It would have been neat to see the Revival versus the Viking Raiders, but I understand why, because now you can set up the narrative. The New Day, they had to take on Heavy Machinery. Granted, they had their squash against the B-Team. They had a real match against the Revival. So now, what you see is that you have this entire team and the Viking Raiders show up. Or, I'm sorry, the OC shows up. This is just a squash match. Most part, New Day's all spent. OC comes in. It's the magic killer. And the club goes over. And I'm like, whoa. The club won. That's good. Mainly because that's different. Normally, poor Carl Anderson needs to pin. Not this time. And war, 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 war. The Viking Raiders, the War Raiders, the War Machine, the Viking Experience. Oh, I should not mention that last one. But the Viking Raiders come out. Oh. Oh. This feels like something out of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Strike heavy. Just two teams that don't like each other. Just want to fight each other. Fight, 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 fight. That's some good stuff going on. Again, Carl Anderson. He's pretty, I always feel bad for him because he's always the smallest one in all these matches. 
again, it goes back to that theory that they always have the small man picking the pin, or at least getting beat on. Yeah. And eventually they do take out Eric. Ivar gets a hot tag in. Ivar is just an athletic freak. I've never seen a big man, and he is a big man. Do cartwheels, flips, all that stuff. Whoa! That was some good stuff for a change. Although, unfortunately, it's a little bit too much. Um, Eric, Eric, yeah, gets speed up a lot. Um, eventually, he gets he gets the team again. A lot of good double teams. That's tag team wrestling. You have to know when to double team the other guy, and it works. Again, they hit again the magic killer on the Viking Raiders, and a shock. The club go over. They are now the best tag team in the world. So that was really cool. And then we had kind of the moment that all of Saudi Arabia was waiting for. Um, that was actually a really amazing match before I go any further. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The showcase who had to be showcased. It gave people room to work even if it was a squash match. This to me was a surf and turf match. Then we get to the one that all of Saudi Arabia is waiting for, Cesaro versus Mansoor. It's a pretty good match. Um, instead of they just kind of like slap hands at the beginning. I don't know. Some places do that. Some places don't. I think in the cultural thing here in the states, more likely to shake hands. Other other people just kind of clasp hands. I don't know what it is over there. But Cesaro, it was weird though, because he was wearing like full tights. He doesn't seem as muscular. He seems to have kind of chicken legs and tights. And it's like the full leg tights. He looks better in trunks for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it shows off the musculature of his legs, but his legs just look thin though. Like tiny legs. And I know, pound for pound, Cesaro is known to be one of the strongest WWE superstars. Um, Mansoor, for the most part, when they're inside the ring, Mansoor does really good. However, once he gets outside the ring, Mansoor gets beat up a lot. That's what the heel Cesaro is supposed to do. He's supposed to beat up a hometown boy outside and say, hey, this is your hometown boy. Watch me rub his head into the guardrail. Good stuff. Um, Cesaro, again, he looks weird and tight. Mansoor has that moonsault. Oh. For a while, it seemed like Cesaro was always going to win. Um, he got his foot up on the ropes, at like right after the right before the three count, he got his foot up. He tried to cheat. He did all the things a heel is supposed to do, but yet he did not overcome Mansoor because Mansoor has that boot salt. Whoa. I don't know what it is, but people in the WWE have really perfected the moonsault. Um, for, for a change, the hometown guy wins, cuts a little promo afterwards, and Sir wins. I was thoroughly entertained by this match. This was a real quality match. This, to me, this was another surf and turf match. And now that I've actually properly figured out how to vent myself. We have Braun, then we have Braun Strowman versus Tyson Fury. I'll tell you what, I was kind of shocked with this in the fact Tyson Fury picked up a lot of wrestling moves for being in the wrestling in a really quick time frame. I mean, I don't think I could have learned all that stuff that quickly, although I do know a little bit. I have done a moonsault before, folks, and trust me, that top rope's a lot taller than you think. As a Techno Blue Ranger, I've done a lot of other crazy flippy stuff, which, which part of which I've kind of regretted because I had to learn how to fall correctly. But again, it's just really... I was shocked. I'm like, Tyson Fury? Listen, he wasn't doing any moonsaults or any crazy stuff. He kept a very simple, sound wrestling match. I'll tell you what, it wasn't as clunky as I thought it was going to be. And he did basic moves. He knows how to do a headlock, armbar. Dropped toehold. That was impressive. Did a drop kick. 
Um, Braun Strowman, of course, he's just more of the, the big man. Clubbing blows, power moves. To Braun's credit, he kept the match really simple. With Tyson Fury in the match when he had to. Took Tyson Fury out of the comfort zone when he had to. It was great. Tyson Fury did do one thing that kind of upset me. He did do the Undertaker setup. I don't know if that was just a homage or just say, hey, I can do this too. Or, hey, you know what? I saw this on TV once. It looked really cool. So, again, that was pretty neat. Um, eventually, Braun Strowman does do his little run around thing. He gets caught once, although he does hit it the second time. And as he gets in, he throws Tyson Fury in the ring, which is a mistake. Because then, as Braun's slowly getting in, Tyson Fury knocks him with a right hook. Ten count! Ten count! Ten count on Braun Strowman. Also, what it wasn't as bad as the match as I expected it to be. I expected it to be really clunky, really short. This was decent. Hmm. I'll say this all. Oh, hey, kitty cat. This was actually probably. I'll upgrade this. But this was a cheeseburger match. Hey, you. Ooh. There she goes. We'll see her exit quickly. Then we have for the US title AJ Styles. Oh, that's my cell phone. I can actually hear my cell phone going off. I'll check it later. You can tell by the party tone. I don't know if you can hear it because of where the microphone is. But you have AJ Styles versus Umberto Carrero, who won the Battle Royal. Yeah, let's have that New Japan feel. New Japan AJ. Oh. New Japan AJ is so good. I could get more New Japan style AJ. My only qualm about this match, again, it's kind of repetitive. It was a very heavy striking match. I'll tell you what the Saudis were going nuts for this match. Seer. Although, I'll tell you what. The, um, Umberto Carrero did do a lot of classic lucha style moves. The Mexican arm drag was great. Japanese arm drag was probably even better. But for some reason, the Saudi princes and I guess royalty or, or VIPs in the front row, they're like bored. They're all like looking at their cell phones and like saying, oh, oh, I don't know. They just seem to be phased out of it. The rest of the crowd seemed to be eating it up though. That front row, meh. They were just there, like, meh. I don't know what they expected, but but you never know. And you just saw my cat lick herself and I don't know, scooped her out of the room. So we'll see again. It was so good. Umberto goes flying, but AJ's already learned his lesson. He knows not to let Umberto fly. Try the cat pressure this time. Umberto said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crawl and fight, and I do want to win this. So he crawled outside. He managed to get the ropes. He had to release it. However, AJ Styles has so many weapons available to him. He has a calf crusher. It's a Styles Clash. And he also has that phenomenal, phenomenal forearm, too. And again, he doesn't have any padding on it because he takes that elbow pad off. This is the phenomenal forearm on Umberto Carrero. The one thing I will caution WWE about is that you don't want to have Umberto eat too many losses. It's one thing to have him eat losses, again, to AJ Styles, Seth, Roll Seth Rollins. Not so much the other. He has to take on, let's see here, who would be good? He has to take on, say, a Curtis Hawkins, get a fairly easy win. Not a squash. More so a semi squash. Again, I'll tell you what, I like this match. This was a good surf and turf match. Oh, I do apologize for that, folks. Then we have Natalia versus Lacey Evans. <sighs> Again, is it that no other women wanted to come in a full bodysuit and t-shirt and wrestle? I mean, is that the thing? Becky almost does that. Who else almost does that? Some other woman almost does that, too. 
I don't know. I guess I'm so tired of these two wrestling each other. So it's like that, that, that tipping point. It's like, yep, you're on the edge, you're on the edge. Whoop. It's time to go off the edge. Again, <laughs> it kind of looks like they were just in their practice here, the way they were dressed. I guess I had to do that for, for S S Saudi Arabia reasons. Whatever. Although it would have been funny just if Lacey Evans came out with some like Saudi words, like Arabic words across her butt. That would have been WWE gold. But it didn't happen, though. Um, for the most part, it was really a basic wrestling match. Um, Lacey Evans did go for that jumping moonsault. I'll tell you what still might be one of the best moonsaults, though, because Charlotte Flair is going way down with her moonsault. Natalia again, kind of classic wrestling. Learned a lot from her father, uh, Jim the Animal Nightheart. Kind of strike heavy going after the legs. Couldn't get the sharpshooter in once. Did get in a second time. And this was more of a show of mutual respect from these two. I guess they had to do that maybe again for the Saudi crowd, but I don't know. I mean, I've seen this already so often. Granted, the Saudis haven't seen this, so it's probably new to them. But I've seen it a lot. Meh. It was a ham sandwich. And then in the next match, we finally got to Team Flair versus Team Hogan. Kind of what I was looking for. Uh, Shorty G and Shinsuke Nakamura start off. Oh, and by the way, Ricochet came out in like a red, white, and blue Jushin Thunder Liger outfit. I guess that's his thing for big pay-per-views. I mean, he looked, he looked like a semi-American hero. And this is coming from the Techno Blue Rangers, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, Shorty, Shorty, she's just terrible. I, I don't know. If I could, well, I'll scratch my helmet because I still don't understand that. But, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, a lot of blind blind tags, kind of getting in when they can. When Rusev game came in, uh, there was a tease against him and Bobby Lashley. The crowd understand this was a big fight moment. The guy who, who who's, guy who's going to fight the guy and get a beat of the guy who, who committed adultery against his wife. You know, in Islam culture, is a big no-no. Instead, of course, Bobby Lashley heals up the cowardly heel, tags himself out. Uh, Ali gets in. Ali is too small to be in this. I know Shorty G's small, but Ali's. I understand why they would have Ali again, kind of like the hometown boy. I want to say he is of Arabian descent, I think. But comes from at least that Middle East region, or his, or his parents do. I know he was like. I want to say he was, he was actually born in like Chicago or something. I know he, I know he lives in Chicago. But I think his parents came from that, that whole kind of general region. Um, Ali gets beat up by everyone. That's Ali's role. Again, very predictable tag team stuff. Uh, let's see here. He gets beat up a lot. Um, eventually Ricochet comes in. And when he gets in, he when he's fast, he's fast. If not, he just gets beat up. He gets by all the big guys. They, they the big guys know how to power Ricochet around, slow him down, and that's the way to beat Ricochet. So you already have the formula. A uh, Baron Corbin, uh, he like just yells something. He's like, he was like yelling behind, 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 and it's really bad when you can hear wrestlers tell other wrestlers to spot. Especially if it's really obvious. Um, there was some other thing. Oh, yeah. Someone yelled out, what was that? I guess they, they forgot something. Whoa, what was that? I don't know if they did it out of pure awe or if they just did it out of confusion. I say, what was that? That wasn't supposed to be there. Um, Roman Reigns got the hot tag in because he's the big dog. And, of course, this led to the spot fest time where every wrestler hits all their signatures onto each other, one after the other after the other. Uh, Roman Reigns eventually takes care of all of Team Flair. Roman Reigns is also the first person in a long time to kick out of an RKO. 
that was good. That was unpredictable. Eventually, Roman does hit, hit the spear, I think, on Randy Orton. And I think Orton actually takes a pin. Team Hogan wins! This was a fun enough match. Um, just seemed like kind of a like a normal WWE. We're going to put all these people in the ring and let them figure out. Cheeseburger match. And then finally, we have the main event of the evening. We have Seth Rollins versus The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. And they did that red sepia thing. And I wonder if you were in the upper part of the audience. I wonder if that, if you could actually see anything. Because even on TV or computer or techno vision, it looked weird. You're like, oh. Okay, I, I see what they're doing. When it got to the shadows part, the red light does some weird stuff. You never know. But again, the Saudis do have all the pyrotechnics in the world, though. How did that happen? Now, the red light came out. Um, first thing is, Fiend goes, he does a throat, cross-throat shot right to Seth Rollins. And he begins to crush Seth Rollins. Eventually... When we get into the crowd, though, Seth does the unface like thing and actually gets the advantage on the outside of the ring. Granted, this is a false count anywhere match. I want to see the concession stands at a Saudi, at a Saudi Arabia arena. That would be pretty neat to see. Uh, for the most part, it was either outside the ring, up the ramp, or at the stage area. It wasn't as all over the place as it is in American arenas. I don't know. Um, they did get into the crowd a bit, really just the first row and the kind of like the really empty sections, the real, they have really dedicated, dedicated sections, and there's a lot of space between everything. Uh, the crowd did get involved. Here. Yeah, there were chair shots involved. The sledgehammer came out, but this time the referee could not stop the match, which is good because if they did, I think. Saudis probably would have loved it, but people in America would have rioted. Uh, eventually, Bray, Bray put himself th through a table somehow. Um, Seth also goes through a table, which is always good to see. Again, Seth, you need to know the rules of wrestling. You set up the table, my friend. That means you go through the table. Um, they go up to the stage. They, he, th he throws Bray into the technical area, and of course, sparks go flying everywhere. I think the fiend's dead. Eventually, Seth goes down to kind of check because it is a false count anywhere. Um, the fiend pushes some of the cases, they bump into Seth. He puts on the mandible claw, then hits the sister Abigail, gets the pin. Whoa, surprise! The fiend is a new WWE Universal Champion. That'll be interesting to see how this plays out on SmackDown tomorrow, or today, depending on, I guess, what time zone you're in. But again, I'd like to, and that was, and this, it was a good surprise ending. Kind of standard stuff, though. I do like the fire, I do like the pyro, though. This was another surf and turf match. Overall, I mean, the Saudis definitely got their money worth. I mean, it was a fun show. If you take out the Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Helena Cell, I dare say this was definitely better than, than WWE's last pay-per-view, which was Helena Cell. Again, minus the one match. Because that match was... Amazing. All the matches on this card were really solid, though. I mean, why can't they do this at Hell in a Cell? Or other B pay per views? Or even WrestleMania? Indeed. So, again, 
because of it was Halloween on the Techno Blue Ranger. You probably won't see me again until right around New Year's Eve when I come out to party again. So, um, again, either later today, tomorrow, depending which time zone you're in, and, and probably depending when this video actually goes up, Bobo Tom will be back to talk about, to do his, again, Friday Smackdown show. Again, 